Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Here's another cool endgame study that I'd like to share with you. This one by A. Troyetsky. Uh, quite the tricky guy was this Troyetsky. This is a name that may be familiar to you. This is not the first time I've been, uh, not the first time I've shared a puzzle by him in this uh, cool chess puzzles playlist. Uh, it's white to move in this one. Uh, this puzzle, interesting for a couple of reasons, just in and of itself the the ideas in this one are interesting and also when I put this up against my chess engine Stockfish 6 it was not able to figure the answer out. I gave it a couple of minutes to crunch the numbers in well at the end of the day it wasn't able to figure it out only later did I realize what the little issue was. Uh, I encourage you those of you trying to improve in chess uh, these endgame studies are excellent exercises to improve your calculation skill. Uh, try to unlock the ideas with this one. The little, the little tricks or ideas contained within endgame studies. The effort you put in is, in my opinion, time well spent. So again, it's white to move in this one. If you'd like to, go ahead, pause the video, spend some time on this. Put it on one of your at-home boards. Come back to the video at a later point to see the answer. White to move. It's up to you. Go ahead. Try and find the best continuation. Okay. The idea here is to first play rook f5. If you got that as the start, great. It's important to note that black is ready to not only promote, but promote with check. Grabbing the bishop right away, we get a queen. This might be something to test out initially and then see, well, can white somehow generate some fortress? You know, uh, coordinate their rook, pawn, and king in a way where black cannot make progress. Unfortunately, this is not the case. In some cases, you may be able to do that, not here. This will be a win for black. They will eventually be able to win this pawn, and then king and queen versus king and rook is a win for black. Uh, additionally, if white tries to hunt down the pawn, we just promote right away, and this one is actually much simpler because after rook takes bishop, we immediately pick up the rook. So the idea is to first give this check, and there's a couple ideas you now need to see. One is what to do if black goes to the G file, and the other what to do if he goes to the E file. Let's cover first the G file. And it doesn't really matter which of the two squares it goes to. Let's just say he moves forward. Now we play king h3. Notice the king is now on the same file as the pun. This allows for a fork tactic. After black promotes, well, we're threatening the pawn. He needs to do something. So if black's trying to win, got to push that pawn. And if you get a queen, now we play rook g5. And regardless of how the rook is captured, bishop or queen, these are both cases of stalemate. Okay, so, well, what about rook? Well, this is, with best play, this is a theoretical draw here. This will not be enough to win for black. If you promote two a bishop, well, that's not going to cut it. Two bishops, same color square. And a knight, well, this isn't going to work either. These are all cases of either uh, a drawn position or just a game over position due to stalemate. Uh, so those are the tricks if the king goes to the g-file, having this resource of rook g5. And let me point out one other thing, and this is something that I thought about. Every puzzle that I'm sharing with you in this playlist is one that I try to work through uh, first, of course. Uh, one of the things that ran through my mind, and maybe it's something that you can relate to as well if you spend some time working this one out, it was at this moment I questioned, was there a difference between playing king h3 or rook g5 on move 2? And there is. Rook g5 is not working, because after bishop takes rook king h3, now black can promote to not a queen, that stalemate, not a rook, stalemate not a bishop either but rather a knight and this will be a win these guys will eventually be able to deliver checkmate so it's important just a little move order detail we first 
play king h3, wait to see what black promotes to, and only then uh, play rook to g5, or maybe not even rook to g5 again. We wait to see what black does. King h3 uh, is the key second move. Okay, we got that covered. We know what to do if the king goes to the g-file. Suppose he goes to the e-file. The trick here is to now play to the e-file with check. Doesn't matter where the king goes. Let's just say he approaches. Now we play rook e1, preventing the pawn from promoting. Bishop takes rook. Notice he's defending h4. And so this allows now king h3. And we have a similar scenario going on. You promote to a queen, stalemate, you promote to a rook, it is stalemate. You promote to a bishop, this is a dead drawn position. And this position right here is the reason, for me at least, uh, Stockfish 6, the engine that I'm using, this is the reason that Stockfish 6 was not able to figure this puzzle out for me. It considers this position here as winning for black, but that is not the case. It does not matter how many dark square bishops you put on the board, you can't win this as black. So for some reason, and maybe it's something you can relate to with uh, your engine or chess computer you're using, it was some for some reason evaluating this as a win for black, and that's why it didn't come up with the uh, the correct continuation right from that initial position. Uh, this is a drawn position if you're promoting, promoting to a bishop. And the one last detail is what to do if you promote to a knight. In the previous position, I said that these two will be able to force checkmate, but unfortunately, they're a bit too close together. The white king is in check. King g2 attacks the knight. Bishop here to defend. We just take the bishop. The only other move is knight to e2, and now the final touch king to f1, and white will be winning one of these two minor pieces next, and it's a draw. So, some clever ideas, of course. It seems to always be the case with this Trotsky guy. Um, we have to really see the two ideas in mind if the king goes to the g-file or the e-file, the stalemating resources, and that last little trick where the two minor pieces happen to be just a little bit too close to each other and you're able to hunt one of them down and uh, it turns out to be a draw in all cases so uh, as usual feel free to share uh, any feedback to this video uh, put it again put it up against your computer see what kind of results you get maybe you have a similar experience feel free to share any feedback in the comment section below and as usual I hope you enjoyed it that's all for now Take care. Bye.